Trajal Harrell, how are Hi. you doing? Welcome. Thank you. We're so excited to, to have you on the 15-16 uh, the season. This is going to be a really wonderful moment for us, and I know a, a, a really exciting sort of return of your work broadly in this tour in the United States. What do you think about what's, what's happened to you as an artist living, living and working largely in Europe? You know, in New York, let's say you do a sh you're lucky to, if you get a show, you do the show four times, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Some people, of course, there are a few people who get to tour the work around the states a little bit more, and so maybe, but in Europe, yes, some of the pieces I'm touring, we're going to do them 30, 40, 50 times. And this was a goal of mine to work internationally, having that kind of access to the life of the work and being able to tour it is, 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 is amazing. I also work a, a bit in Latin America, mm -hmm. Asia is starting, and I just did a, my first performance in the Middle East in um, Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. You know, in your career right now, with the people that are surrounding you on, on a daily basis, are there um, influences that you feel you've, you've encountered in, in Europe that have really framed your aesthetic? I mean, if you want a name, of course. I mean, we all mm. somehow have to pay attention to Pina Bausch. Mm. I mean, she was very, 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 very important, I think, in Europe and in the States and all over, over the world. And so her work certainly fueled my... I mean, I, will, I can tell you this one story... I remember seeing my first Pina Bausch piece, which was Palermo, Palermo at BAM. I don't remember what year it was. It was in Brooklyn Academy of Music. And I hated it. The piece I remember men were like throwing women, kind of kind of pushing them against the walls. And I was just like, I just couldn't see. I just remember like not being able to sit still in my seat and being like, I cannot wait until this is over. This is horrible. And of course, I was very adamant about my feelings with the friends after. I was like, oh, you know? And two days later, I was walking down the street, and a light went off. Something went off, and I said, oh, my God, you couldn't sit still in your seat because you were having a theatrical experience. Like, that's what, that's what something in the theater should make you do. Like, you don't know what to do with yourself. You don't know, like, something's happening inside of you. And it took me two days for that happening to kind of settle and for me to accept it and finally be able to go, whoa, what did I see? How did I feel about it? What did it make me think? What were the questions, you know? So I try to take people on a ride. You know what I mean? I, I think that, you know, I think that's kind of what I'm known for. I mean, that's why I chose this title, you know, The Ghost of Montpellier Meets the Samurai. It's, it, it's, a, it's, it's taken from this kind of thriller title thing. I try to make it a place where together, we can have a kind of experience that, that, that has a myriad of kinds of feelings and emotions and psychologies, but that is the togetherness that I'm after, mm -hmm. is that we do it together and that through that accomplishment, some sort of greater imaginative possibility is found in the room and you take it out with you. That's, that's what I'm really after.